Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna talk about how I've managed dust collection in my one car garage workshop. There are many options to handle dust in the market and the cheapest is by far using a shop vac. This has the advantage of being a mobile solution but the trade-off normally comes with regards to power. Nevertheless, there are some really good, powerful yet pricey options. Then you have wall-mounted solutions, which can move a lot of air and can store a lot more dust. There are several types of models with multiple bags and additional filters for increased air quality, but as always, added features means more space used and more money spent. The upgrade of these simple wall-mounted systems comes by adding a cyclone separator. This uses gravity to separate heavy particles that fall on the reservoir below. The small dust particles can be either vented out of the building or passed through a filter in order to recirculate the air. And then you can escalate this to super powerful machines with multiple filters and huge cyclones, but these normally are only used in industrial facilities or really big shops. This can put you down 4 plus digits and it's really not the focus of this video. I've started small, as most do, with an Einhell shop vac that came with an ash filter attachment. One of my first projects was actually improving this setup. One of the downsides of a shop vac is that its performance decreases as the bag gets filled up. The reason cyclones or dust separators are really awesome is that they allow for most of the dust and heavy particles to stay in the middle bin and only the small and light particles end up in the bag, thus keeping the suction high for longer. In my case, I've bought a cyclone separator from China and attached it to the ash bin with the help of some 3D printed parts and some vacuum hoses. Then I've built a small cart out of wood to easily move both the vac and the separator. This definitely helped, and if you've seen my previous projects, you probably have seen it in action, like in this video. Nevertheless, the vac itself was not very powerful and I had to upgrade it. I'm a big Festool fan and I completely love their line of products, yet I found a great deal on a Bosch Gas 35M class and I couldn't justify spending twice the money to get a CTM 36 or even a 26. I'm pretty sure the Festool units are great, but I really don't have nothing bad to say about this Gas 35. I've been using it for several months now and it's been performing really good. The thing is that the cyclone theory still applies to this unit, so I thought on retrofitting my old setup to the new vac. I've used mostly scrap wood and pieces of OSP I've had laying around to keep the costs down. After cutting a piece of OSB that fit in on the top of the vac, I've centered the ash container on it and installed 4 small posts using 2 screws per post and some wood glue. Of course, OSB and Craptomeria are not the best quality options, but everything I've used was either recycled or leftovers from past projects. The OSB, for instance, was a piece that I didn't use for the wall paneling, so why throw it away when I can make something out of it? This helped maintain the cost down and I'm always trying to get the most out of the materials. However, if I was to purchase materials for this project, I think plywood would be the very first choice, as it would look much better than the OSP. But still, in the end, I'll try to make the end result look nice. In the front and back part of the OSP panel, you can see two small indents. These are used to help align the panel on top of the vac together with the latching mechanism that I'll go through in a bit. To complement the design and enhance the structure, I've cut some strips of OSB which I've attached with wood glue and some brad nails. After a quick test fit just to make sure that everything was ok, time to add more features. 
I've remembered seeing this overhead attachment for the Fastool Vax and it seemed quite helpful to manage the hose when sanding, so I thought that I could add it to my design. Since I didn't have a big piece of lumber, I've connected two Craptomir scraps using dowels. Also, it gave me an excuse to try out this doll centering jig, which worked really good. Chinese products aren't often known for their pristine quality, but these aluminium jigs are quite nice. After letting the glue dry, I've attached the post to the backside of the structure and then moved on to the latching mechanism. Bosch uses a technology called L-Box, which allows for stacking boxes in a similar way as Festool sustainers. I've managed to 3D print some hooks that secures to the L-Box brackets on top of the VAC, and here you can see me cutting some OSB pieces that help securing the 3D printed L-Box hooks. I linked the Thingiverse files below, I've had to tweak the design a little bit, but depending on the L-Box version you have, it may work as it is. The L-Box attachment consists on two main parts, one which stays fixed and another that pivots on a steel rod. It also has a spring to maintain the hook in the closed position. This will make the removal of the whole support as easy as pushing the handles inwards to release the hooks. The whole construction was really not planned, I just kept adding up OSB pieces to build a small sturdy housing for the L-Box mechanism to work in. After attaching the L-Box hooks, I've traced the outline of the top of the vac and cut the profile with a jigsaw. Then, I've sanded all the pieces and added some wood putty to fill the voids. After some additional sanding to make things smooth, then came the time to paint. I first put down a layer of primer and then applied several coats of polyurethane reinforced paint. OSP chips away easily, so this adds a level of protection apart from improving the statics. And this is the final result, and I have to say that I'm very happy how it came out. Not only helps keeping the vacuum suction high, but also saves me money, as each bag costs around 10 euros. Well, I hope you liked it, and I hope that it gave you some ideas on how to improve your own shop setup. If you did, please consider subscribing and smashing that thumbs up button, it will help me a lot. See you on the next video and take care out there!